All right, guys, Cody here. Uh, it's been a long time since I've uh, made a video. I have been busy with things in life, including the new podcast. Uh, so uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's called Off The X Podcast. Go check it out. But I uh, wanted to get to some questions. And uh, again, I will always try to do these um, uh, videos when people have questions. Uh, sometimes I, I get busy. So um, but let's get through a couple. This this goes all the way back to uh, when the Chinese consulate in Houston was was being evacuated, um, and people asked if they were burning their classified material. Uh, I suspect yes. I don't know for a fact, but um, that's generally part of the process of an evacuation. You can't you can't and won't carry all of that classified, whether it be technology or uh, uh, classified or, or, or documents or hard drives, you name it. Um, uh, that's a Chinese process, but I'm assuming that is the case. If you read uh, my book um, in uh, chapter ISIS at the Gates, you kind of, I kind of walk through the process of, of some of the things we did. Um, so yeah, I suspect that's what, the, that's what they were doing. For those of us entering DS, how do background investigations work if we spent time overseas? Okay, I remember this question coming from a guy that um, he, uh, you know, he filled out his SF-86, which is what you'll, you will all do uh, in order to get a, a, a top secret clearance. And he had to list his travel overseas, his work or living overseas. And so the way that works is uh, it'll get tasked out. So the way the investigations work in general is it's tasked out to uh, investigators around the U.S., wherever you've lived. Um, those local investigators are not DS agents, um, although back in the day they used to be. It's a little bit a long time since we've done that. Um, but the overseas investigations are oftentimes, depending on the size of the embassy, sometimes we have contractors that work there that do it or someone that's a direct hire. Other times it is the DS agent that's doing the background investigation overseas. I know I did them in Vietnam. Um, and so if you're waiting for your investigation to get cleared because you travel to four or five different countries or you've lived in four or five different countries, or, or one country, uh, that uh, the portion of that investigation for that country will get sent as a lead to a DS agent over there who does the, who does the who holds the investigations program, the background investigations program, and that person will conduct the lead. So, say you worked at uh, Disney in China, for example, the DS agent will likely contact um, someone at Disney in China and have an interview with them and ask them, hey. You know, all the basic questions. It's like a, a set list of questions, and then we could base additional questions off of that list. And then once that's done, once that information is gathered, that lead is put in, the information on that lead is put in, and it's closed. And so if you've traveled to a bunch of different countries or lived in a bunch of different states, you have to wait for every one of those leads to get closed. And then the case manager, once they're all closed, will send it up to adjudication and what's called per PSS, personnel suitability. Um, and so, uh, well, that's, just, that's how it works. Background investigations, oftentimes, uh, if, we, if you don't have a contractor or a direct hire, uh, non-DS agent just doing background investigations at some of these posts, and usually it's larger posts that have them, um, if you don't have that and you have a DS agent doing, it's oftentimes put on the back burner, right? It's oftentimes uh, not the top uh top thing on the agenda for the for the agent or for the assistant regional security officer there there's a ton of stuff that goes on in embassies and consulates uh people are constantly busy whether it's it's mundane stuff as access control uh policy or procedures or uh, approving visitor requests you know or or you know running down because some you know asylum seeker just ran his motorbike into the gate i don't know shit happens all the time there uh, at embassy, so background investigations is usually on the back burner. So if your if your case is taking a while, if you're looking to be a DS agent or any government agency, um, and and you spent time overseas and your case is taking a while, uh, that's likely why it's got hung up somewhere. Um, and I don't have a resolution for you. You can con just keep in contact with your people and and hopefully, uh, when I say your people like HR, your contact, and hopefully that it gets resolved soon. All right, that's how that goes. Uh, next one, how is morale now um, in BSAC and those serving? Uh, the question was cut off. It was posted on on uh, on YouTube 
on one of the YouTube videos and I, I couldn't, I don't know if they removed it and I just saw the snippet of it, but it just talked about morale. Anyway, I don't know how morale is. Um, I have buddies that are there that are still in. Uh, they seem to be doing fine. I know a lot of um, posts have had family members sent back to the US for safety purposes due to COVID. Um, and so a morale for those guys as high as it can be for living without your family. Um, you know, uh, as for morale for those in BSAC, um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I can't, I can't make that up. Right. Um, that said, uh, I do have a Facebook group I've talked about and there are people in that Facebook group, everyone from brand new agents, I'm sorry, to, from, from people in BSAC and Fletzy to people that just got out of it. People that are two or three years on, uh, I have a guy that's a GS 1811 that, uh, he spent, uh, he's probably been in for 16 years, and then someone just came in who's been on for 20 years. So it's a very diverse group of, and then of course, a lot of you that are just aspiring DSA. So if you have questions, join the group, fill out the questions, I'm, uh, you know, the, the entry questions. I'm not going to prove it without it. Um, and then, uh, you know, get in the group and ask questions. It's meant to be a forum for you guys to connect and not one like these freaking officer forums out there where people are just spouting off at the mouth. You know, you can really, uh, you can post the questions that you have. And then I, if I know the answer, the real answer, not some bullshit, will tell it to you. And if I don't know it, I'll tell you I don't know it. But there are people in that group um, uh, that can tell you the real deal. And so I would suggest going on Facebook, even if you don't have an account on Facebook, creating one um, and then joining the group. But do fill out the questions because I like to know who's in there, and, you know, their interests. Um, how to lead, how to, how do I lead if I get in too young? I shortened the question, but basically DS, the hiring process in DS is different from other agencies and it has its pros and cons. I think we do a pretty good job overall. By far, majority of guys and girls I've worked with in DS are really good people. Uh, but there are some that get in really young. Some get in right after college. Uh, oftentimes it's master's degree. They'll get in with minimal work experience. And then there are other people that get in after a full 20 years in the Marine Corps or, or, or 10 years in the SEAL teams and then come in with, with advanced degrees as well or coming from Naval from, from uh, Naval or West Point, you know, academies. So there's a, there's a big disparity there. And so if you get in at 23 years old, good for you. But then now you're in 10 years and you're 33 and you get a, an agent that comes in that spent 20 years in the military and you know maybe they're 38 because they got their time extended and you've been in 10 years so you're the boss right you might be overseas you might be trying to lead them this is, happens all the time um that's a tough position to, to be in you just have you have a, a you know a first sergeant in the marine corps that's coming out that's done a lot and and um and you have to technically lead that person but that said at 10 years you should know a lot as well uh, particularly when it comes to a specific skill set of ds and managing up, managing expectations, managing up to, to uh, you know, uh, the front office, which is the ambassador and the DCM, and how to deal with other uh, head uh, uh, section heads in the embassy, and what you can do with the embassy, and maybe you even have more familiarity with the FAM, which is the Foreign Affairs Manual. So, you know, what I'll say to you is, if you if you're that young person but have spent ten years in, you know, this might be down the road, or some of you that's watching this now that's in this position uh you're in charge be in charge be a leader be decisive carry a command presence um look after your team don't shit on your team uh they should be first i i like to say you know marine corps talks about mission accomplishment and troop welfare i like to say a lot of the times it's, it's troop welfare the mission accomplishment by taking care of your troops they'll in fact get the mission done so look out for your guys uh and i would also say don't be a know-it-all you might know a ton because you've been in for 10 years and maybe you've been at post for two years and you're on a three year tour and this 38 year old, you know, two years on um, in DS, but you know, 20 years in the military comes on and uh, well, the math doesn't add up there, but you get my point. And, and um, you know, he, again, that person might have some life experience. So uh, don't be a know-it-all, listen, uh, em em embrace the experiences that those individuals have I encourage people uh, in, in where I'm working now, people that, that work for me, you know, it's okay to disagree. Tell me if you disagree and let's talk about it. 
And I want to know if they disagree. I want to know why they disagree and we can spitball it. And sometimes if somebody has a better solution, then, then you'll take it. And I'm telling you, if you're that young RSO who's trying to lead a newer agent who has a ton of experience, um, that agent will, uh, that, that new agent will, will respect that. You know, th they might come in, uh, hopefully they come in and say, listen, I'm just going to be open. A lot of these, these older guys, I think, do that. Um, but it, you have to do your part in not being a know-it-all and, and understanding, uh, but balancing that with you are in charge, right? Um, so those are just a few, few I mean, I could go down the list of what I think a, a good leader entails. I came in at 28. I think it was a great time to come in because I, I, I had, I had, uh, I had uh, five years, a little, little less than five years Marine Corps experience. I had uh, three or so years in the private sector. Um, and um, so I had a, a good amount of experience. Um, and then, you know, but I didn't have too much to where I felt like I was being led by, you know, this young Joe that, that uh, you know, got him to DS at an early age. Um, so I, I feel like that was a good age to come in at. Um, but, you know, you, you can't always predict when you're going to get in. So uh, what I would say is, is, uh, is well, just lead. That's all there is to it. Uh, that's it. That's all I got for now. If those of you who are interested in listening to podcasts, check out the new podcast, the Off the X podcast. It is on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean. It's on my website, CodyPeron.com. And it is on, I already said Podbean, but it's on the Podbean uh, app and the website. So check it out. Um, I've talked to several former DS agents, ranging in years and experience. I have lined up another retiree, 20 years of experience. I have a WIPS security contractor medic lined up. I have a guy that spent about six years in, but he spent a lot of time in his six years, he got a lot done, uh, including being uh, in Tripoli, Libya, uh, prior to uh, the attack on, on Benghazi. Um, so check it out. My website has everything you need if you're interested in following me or learning more about DS or about the overseas contract world, or if you want me to uh, attempt to mentor you, uh, I'm happy to do such things. Just hit me up, info at CodyPeron.com, or just go to the website, CodyPeron.com, um, and there you'll find a couple blogs, which I need to be better on. I keep saying I need to be better. Haven't come, haven't, haven't gotten better yet, uh, but I have a couple blogs. Uh, my social media is there, um, uh, and then uh, you can find the podcast, and you can also find the book there. The book, Agents Unknown, True Stories of Life as a Special Agent in the Diplomatic Security Service, finally hit 100 uh Reviews took two years, but hit 100 reviews. 90% uh, of those are five star, 10% are four star. So pretty, pretty happy with with the way it came out. Um, and so it's available on, in paperback. It's available in um, uh, Kindle, and it's also on Audible for audiobook. Um, I do uh, send copies of books, uh, of signed copies of books. I don't feel like I'm, I mean, I'm a nobody to sign your book, but I'd be happy to do it. Uh, you just got to buy it directly from me because, um, and then you got to pay shipping. Whereas Amazon, if you have an account, you don't pay shipping. If that's the case, hit me up info at codyperron.com. Happy to do that for, for anyone though. Um, uh, yeah, so that's it. Agents unknown underscore book, uh, in, on Instagram is where I'm most active agents, unknown Facebook links to my Instagram. So you see that too. Uh, the Facebook group I talked about, you waited all this time to hear about it only because I forgot to tell you. It's called Becoming a DSS Agent. Um, so look it up. And if you're interested, I will happily approve you if you fill out the questions. All right. That's all I got. Post any questions you got down below. Hit me up, info at CodyPeron.com if you're interested in talking more. Um, and we can spitball some things. All right. Thanks, y'all. Out.